Oh, hey, hey, how's it going? Uh, Young People Podcast here for another episode. Just passion, purpose, and lifestyle. My name's Lockie. I'm J-Max, and we're talking all about... Uh, what are we talking about? Hustle. We're talking about rest. We're talking about optimization. We're talking about all these little nuggets of wisdom from ancient philosophers. And we're talking about motivational people that have been on the podcast and all sorts of things. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anything to add to that? Quick, we have got to do it right now. Oh, see you later. And that's some good tea. Mmm, yummy yeah, tea. Yeah, nothing beats a green tea for your podcast. Hey, what tea do you drink while listening to podcasts? Let us know in the comments. Tea is just dirty water. That's what a lot of people say. And But coffee, I mean, you're, you're a coffee guy though, eh? I, I drink about one coffee a day. Just, really? Just in the morning. I have like one a week. Yeah. When I'm like, like just like, at, if I'm out with friends. I, I don't even something. have it to wake me up. That's what most people have coffee mm. for, right? Just, you know, they need to be woken up. Yeah. But yeah, I just have it just for the uh, the health benefits of just a one co- coffee a day. What, what are to strike the, your metabolism. Right. Yeah. So it's a metabolism thing, is it? Yeah, just to keep everything going. But yeah, let's uh, nice. Let's um, get into some real content. Hey there, everyone. Oh. This is J Max and Burz to the right of me, or to your left, I, I suppose, on uh, the Young People Podcast, where we talk about what? What do we talk about, Burz? We talk. Uh, well, we talk about uh, lifestyle, uh, passion, purpose. Yeah, all those uh, sorts of fun things. Yeah, this is probably the the coldest open that we've had. Very, very cold open um and it's funny that you mentioned that because we're right in the middle of winter here as well so, um, <laughs> hence the jacket that yeah indeed indeed so um thanks so much for joining us for another episode whether you're watching the video on youtube it's it's been really good i guess and as you can see where this is like the first episode we've done um in a little while where it's just been the two of us and daytime um, as well and when was the last time well, we did a daytime episode well you probably can't even tell on the videos but yeah most of them are nighttime and luckily we've got these great studio lights here and this great camera that we're using as well um but yeah this is like the first one we're recording in months mm. where the sun's up which feels weird we usually yeah. like t- uh our last episode with ex- exercising health was recorded at like 9 p.m yeah t- as because, because this time, time difference zones, yeah um chris was um, and, um, from Cyprus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is where? Where is Cyprus? It's, uh, it's, near Greece. it's in Europe. Yeah, it's near Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so um, yeah, I I'll be honest. I had not heard of Cyprus before. Really? Yeah, yeah. But it's, I'm an uncultured swine. No, it's well. I mean, it is a small country. It's 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 an island country. So it's just in the Mediterranean Sea. And yeah, it's but it's yeah, it's near Greece. Um, but you're like a geography whiz. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said to me the other day, do you ever just open Google Maps and just like, <laughs> like fuck around on it's, there? It's, <laughs> I no, honestly, not really. I like that's what, most that's, people have games on their phone. Burst just opens up Google Maps. Legit, and just like I, I, mm-hmm. I genuinely have no games, Borders, and probably because that's one of the yeah, geography. That, that's one of the things I do. I'll just like go around and like <laughs> because it's really interesting. Like you zoom in on some like random like Russian town, and it's like, oh, yeah, there's, like <laughs> petrol station there, there's like grocery store. So you're gonna know it's your like, way around everywhere. Yeah, that's. Yeah. That's actually like your superpower. Like so in the entire time, I've how long have we known each other? Four or five, five years, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So you are like a geography whiz, man. You're like you, you never get I, lost. I've never it. been lost. Yeah. yeah. And I like a pre- that's why I take you everywhere. Our area, like, the Central Coast, I know so well. Like I know like every street. Like yeah. it's like yeah, it, it's insane. Yeah, like I, I've never <laughs> known someone to be that like direction oriented. I don't know. Yeah, I just it's, it's always fascinated me. So um, how'd you get into that? I think um, no, I actually got into it through um through sport. Yeah. Through like I think I was remember watching the World Cup, the two thousand and six World Cup. We would have been like ten years old at the time. And like hearing like you know Czech Republic and like Slovakia and uh, you know Colombia and like where are all these countries and you know you you find them on a map and you can sort of see where everything is and like in Europe especially it's like obviously so many countries and everything in South America there's a lot of countries too. Um, I just found it all really fascinating and I'm really into like population sizes as well, capital cities. What's the population of Russia? Hundred. I actually don't know. I, I think don't. it's. Uh, I don't, it, I'm going to get this it, wrong. It would be a fair... It, it, I, I, I heard... I think that it's about 150 million. 150 million. That sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is and like huge. It, it's, of course, the biggest country too. Yeah. Except a lot of it's not... 
overpopulated. But then you've got smaller countries like China, whose population well, is China's like, still pretty big. China, yeah. China's um actually China is um China's bigger than Australia. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of like um the population, oh, like yeah. what's the population of China? Like it's, it's over a billion. It's like the thing. Like you look at a country like Australia. Like we're so like we're so spread out like so much of the land is uninhabited we're like just all on the coasts yeah. whereas it's china it's like a similar size a bit bigger but like there's just people everywhere so imagine if australia was like that you just went out into the outback and it's just like i cities. think there's there's you can't do that with australia though. there's some places yeah. that you just i mean it's can't. It's, it's just, just unlivable yeah it's, it's just, just yeah, sand it's like just kangaroos desert. yeah and wombats yeah. yeah it would be a pretty uh, dismal place to live it would be yeah, it would be. Yeah, but um, no, I was gonna say it's 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 cool coming back to like a two person episode. We can sort of have a little debrief with you guys about our last few episodes and the video content. So the very first video episode That's we something did to bring up by the way, you just reminded. Me. Okay, yeah. but the very first video episode we did it would have been a couple of months back. I can look it up now. Um, a number of episodes ago, uh, we did by ourselves, and that was a lot of fun. It was right back to episode thirty six back in May twenty seventh. Um, so there you go, a couple of months ago now. Um, and we've had a bunch of awesome guests. Hey, we've had Glide, they came back, Zach Hampton yeah, returned. Cool. Zach and then yeah. we did a Zoom chat with Exercising Health as well. Um, some some tasty guests that, there. That Exercising Health chat was so good. I've listened to like all the clips that we've put out, but the episode on its own so many times because there's so many things that I've learned from it. Like, yeah. Because I, I, I love that that world, that health and fitness sort of biohacking realm. Mm. And and Chris was someone that, like, I was always watching anyway. And mm. so the fact that he was willing to come on the podcast just blew my mind. I was like, mm. holy crap, yeah, this is mm. amazing. So, yeah, just to have an in-depth conversation about these things. It's like being in a class uh, in, a, in a school or something and raising your hand and when the, you don't understand yeah. something that the teacher's saying, it's like you have that interaction with someone so influential. So, yeah, that was really cool, which it, is the big benefit of this yeah. podcast. I mean, I love I love just this whole idea of, um, of making like – facts about health health and inf- information about health and fitness um accessible for like the regular person because mm. like i don't know it's sort of been like a running theme like jacob is is more of like the sort of the fitness buff and the exercise and i'm a bit of a new when it comes to that stuff um so like for people like me like that's like a perfect example it's like he was explaining these things and i was like yeah i was like like after the episode i like wanted to like get i was like yeah no, i, I want to st- go for runs and yeah, yeah i'm moving. still going back and like refining my knowledge on things uh. like that but you say that you're a bit of a noob on it i i think that you just you're, you're obviously extremely active like you used to yeah, go through your you, be, you yeah. had a big running phase that you went through which was still awesome bit, yeah. yeah you still do that and then you play soccer you've got a soccer fives team that were starting up yeah and um I think that's really cool. So just in the sense that you just don't know how to articulate how and why things work, like he was bringing up things like insulin resistance, for Mm. example. All these things are things that you basically do anyway. You just don't – because you just enjoy movement and physical activity, which is – that's the – the fundamental basis of all this just as long as you keep moving that was one of the things he talked about, yeah, constant physical activity. Mm. So, yeah, if you're doing that, then – that's all that, yeah. that really matters. Yeah. And you can go down the rabbit hole if you're super interested, mm. like people like Chris. Yeah. And maybe we should try barefoot hike soon. Maybe I have to try that. Yeah. I've been <laughs> – oh, man, barefoot hiking, I'm like massive about. But yeah. at the moment, I haven't been doing it as much. One, because I've been so busy. And two, because it's cold as shit. That's true, actually, yeah. Because, yeah, it's very cold. I have <laughs> done a few, though, and yeah, mm. it, yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah. But let it, are you, let us know how um, you're enjoying the whether you're you're enjoying the video content. Um, if you have got any tips of what we can sort of um, what we can change or do differently, um, we're looking to do things like add subtitles to to, to yeah. the clips. We've been we've been pumping out clips on social media, yeah. um, just to make the podcast a bit more accessible. I think the the clips are really really good because they make like just little like you know the minute two minute pieces. three minutes you know even less. Um, of yeah, little bite-sized pieces of the podcast for people to, to digest if they don't have time. And we've extracted and bits of information mm. that are relevant. You don't have oh, to yeah. go through, yeah. you know. I mean, the entire podcast is going to be relevant. That was so close. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, oh, I did spill some. A tiny bit. Oh, oh well. 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we were just yeah. talking about the clips, just how important they are to get like an understanding of just mm. like little nuggets of information, mm. which is really valuable. What I was going to bring up before was I had someone the other day uh, who I'd just met mm. say, you don't happen to have a podcast, do you? And I was like, <laughs> actually, yeah. I mean, at this point yeah. in time, you can say that to anyone and the answer is usually <laughs> going to be yes. Yeah, it's going to turn up a bit. But uh, yeah, he said, oh, yeah, because I, I, it just came up as a suggestion on YouTube. And uh, mm. I just saw your face there and I was like, oh, that's sick, man. That's yeah, wow. so cool. And so, uh, yeah. Is I'm this like a co-worker? Or yeah, a co-worker. Yeah. So, but I'd only just really met him. So um, it's cool that yeah, it's good. he was uh, he was getting that, that suggestions mm. Mm. on there. So we're yeah. starting to, to see that. It could have been, I think, as well, because I think in our tags, we I include Central Coast. Like I include like our local area, which I think is important as well, like to sort of a, appreciate the local area because like we're... Appreciate the community. Yeah, like like where we actually live. I know a lot of us online would have, you know, it's great being able to use Zoom as well. But like connecting with local, I mean, even in recent time and like in, with, with a band Glide and an artist, Zach Hampson, these guys are like local guys that live, um, you know, right next door to us essentially. Um, Speaking of yeah. Zach Hampson, he's just put together a 10-week course Ooh, for portrait yeah. painting. Man, he's, so, um, yeah. Get on, like if you're interested, seriously get on it and it's it's amazing is he's insanely talented and from what i see in here he seems like a really really great teacher mm. as well so if it's something that you're interested in and yeah it's a it's a beginner it's a beginner course isn't it yeah like it's it, but he well it is it's for beginners for intermediate and even mm. like he said advanced people yep. that can just sort of refine their skills a little bit and you know sometimes it's good to get back to basics i don't know what he's teaching i've never done anything like that but mm. it'd be yeah really really interesting so if you're interested hit us up and we'll give you the information about zach's uh 10 week course that he's doing or you can check out his episodes and find his page and contact him yourself i think it'd be really really cool so 10 weeks i don't know exactly how it's gonna work and all well, well, yeah I reckon exciting, that's it. It's going to be exciting. extremely exciting. Yeah. He's such a hustler. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every time we get him, I mean, we've had him in two, twice now, and um, it's always a unique chat because he's got such like a an energy about him. Such a he's 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 extremely determined. Yeah. Um, and it sort of rubs off on you. Like after talking to him again, you get it's the fired same up. Where it's like, oh yeah, it's like. I do want to quit my job and pursue this. <laughs> it's like, you know, so but, no, he, he's, yeah. he's, a, he's a good guy and um, it's great to have our returning guests. If you are a guest that has been on, we've had like, uh, how many guests? Have, I lost track because some episodes have been I'm going to, no I'm going to take a swing and say about 15 to eight, yeah, well, 18 guests. Th- this is episode 40. I think we've had... You know, because we, we were doing... I reckon a, more than half have been with guests. Yeah, I reckon. We've done a Especially, bunch of solo topic episodes. Yeah, season two, which is what started up basically this year, mm. was it has been almost exclusively almost, guests. Uh, there's been a couple. There's been a few was, was with us. us. Um, so, yeah, 23, 24, maybe, guests, 25 guests, maybe. Um, but, yeah, episode 40 of the Young People Podcast. And it's funny, just before this, we were, like, listening back to, like, some of the very first yeah. episodes, and it sounds weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was weird. saying that your voice has uh, yeah. since then dropped by about a tone. It has, yeah. So, two I th- semitones. I think I was just, like, maybe just, like, that, you know, those first couple episodes, you're always going to be just a bit nervous. Hey, you welcome to the Young People Podcast. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, they're, like, still still good stuff to go back and listen to. Um, and, yeah, maybe you've been a listener since the old days um, april <laughs> april 2019 was when we started one of the og yeah. fans one of the og OGs. youngins yeah. we need some groupy names yeah well we keep kitties and t- i just keep saying kitties kitties yeah i guess because it's like young people kids yeah um the i was about to say the young peeps but that's super lame it's the thing you gotta find something that's not I mean, maybe something dig something out from one of our episodes. Aren't the fans? To be fair, aren't the fans meant to come up with it? Yeah. Like we probably shouldn't give the names. Like, yeah, you no. are these people to us. <laughs> it's like, this is your name yes. now. It's very like tyrant like. Uh, yes, this is, is who you who are. Who's your biggest fan? dictatorship? Um, who is our biggest fan? Alex Carlum's always been pretty like Alex Carlum. Shout out to Alex Carlum if you li- yeah. if, if he's listening. Imagine if he's just like going for a run or something. He's having a stroll by the beach, listening to the Young People podcast, and all of a sudden he gets a shout, shout out. out. Who's biggest fan? Alex Carlum. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think your dad's probably the biggest fan. 
Maybe he 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 Tom Racer. I don't know if he I don't know if he listens to the he, he does he does follow he the did, content. <laughs> he just supports us. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. Blind. <laughs> we, we could be talking about anything. We could <laughs> we could be plotting <laughs> like murder, and he's just like like and share. Yeah, good content. <laughs> um, no, yeah, uh, maybe Barbaraj too. Have you maybe seen the Barbaraj hoodies pop up? Oh yeah, Barbaraj. He to release some new beanies and he did. And new, uh, heaps of stuff. Dude, he's he's another stickers. hustler. He's uh, releasing beanies. Hoodies, stickers, yeah, stickers. patches. He needs, um, he needs to make face masks. Do he's some probably, face masks. He's, he's going to have socks next and socks. face masks. Yeah, yeah, face masks would be cool. Yeah, though. yeah. yeah. And uh, he's going to just start carving barbarage into people's heads, <laughs> just shaving it in. So God, just yeah, want to trim man. You know, it's like yeah. sure, just leave with barbarage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just brand you with his name. Oh, yeah. that's so good. Speaking of hustle. So one of the things I wanted to touch on during this opportunity to speak is about uh, about that, but specifically the the detriments of of hustle, what it can bring negatively, yeah. because no one really talks about that. It's just hustle, 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 hustle. True, yeah. grind, grind, grind. Mm. And something that I've been, even as an athlete, I've learned to cope with it a lot better. But um, about burnout. Mm. It's a really, really big player. Yeah. Have you experienced burnout? Yeah. T- t- yeah, a couple of times. I mean, like the, a good example like is, is, and I think we touched in the past, is sort of with a podcast towards the end of last year, um, which is sort of partly why we took a break. And I think it was because we were churning out that content. Um, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, to really... Well, it wasn't that we... It was more so that they were doing like the weekly episodes and... I'm trying to juggle schedules and everything and it all just sort of built up a bit and i don't actually i wouldn't say if we got burnt out but it's sort of you start you you, you get to find that balance where you're pushing it so hard the way you start to lose that you're, you're not enjoying it you're not mm-hmm. enjoying the moment and i think that's maybe what we found what we found there was sort of just doing episodes for the sake of it um yeah so th- that was like towards the end of last year when we we're sort of just chewing out those episodes um and i was trying to think of some other examples in my life where I've, where I've had burnout, but it's certainly something to be wary of. You've always been almost in a way like sort of self-employed, like you've created your own path for your, your income and your work, like you're doing your own guitar tutoring and Mm -hmm. things like that Mm -hmm. and going between different schools. And so you've Mm -hmm. had a lot on your plate and scheduling, I would have imagined is a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. I don't know. Is, is, how do you find that? I mean, it's, it's, it's been okay. And I've, it's been a very like gradual sort of increase, I guess, in work. Like my first year out of you school, you didn't throw yourself into the deep end. Yeah, away. like the first year out of school, I was I kept it really chill, and I was essentially working just like one. I would just go in like one day a week to to teach guitar. But now I'm teaching, you know, basically like th- three four days a week now. Um, and then yeah, juggling the other stuff around that. Um, I, I never got burnt out with that. I think I found a sort of a good balance, especially with, with my work and my guitar teaching, um, which was good, but I, I was always wary of it if I was getting tired or something, you know? Um, and luckily I've, I was like, I'm working with people that will, would understand if I needed a day off or something, or if mm-hmm. I need some time off. So that's super important as well. If you've got the right sort of people around you to, to understand, you know, if, if you do need that break, if you do need to take that time off, then then they can help you for that, which mm. is which is super important as well. But yeah, it's an interesting thing. Hey, that that balance. It's like it's important to put in the work and the effort, but you know, at what cost? You know, yeah. is there a point where you're putting in so much effort where you start to lose that passion? You start if you're not enjoying it, then what's the point? Like, do you know mm. what I mean? We sort of just had this conversation before because I was talking about th- this morning I missed my physio appointment, which yeah. was at 7 o'clock. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Seems crazy early for a physio appointment, if you ask me. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, well, that, when they when we were setting up the physio appointment, they just said, okay, well, what's, what time do you want? And I said, just as early as possible just so we can get it out of the way. And they're like, 7 o'clock. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, well... Shit, I did say as early as possible. Uh, so we did that and then I got called into a shift uh, last night for work and I yeah. ended up coming home really late yeah. um, or early, I guess you could say early into the morning. And so I just didn't have enough sleep and I woke up at 7.30 and I was like, oh, damn it, yeah. I missed it. And uh, <laughs> But anyway, the, the point to that story was that... Uh, <laughs> what was the point to that story? I was getting burnt out, I yeah. think, a little bit there. Right. And so it's not just 
the time off that you spend. It's the way you spend the time off. I think mm-hmm. that's massive because anyone can just say, okay, I've had enough and I'm just going to take time off. Mm-hmm. And, and that was the other thing. Oh, that's right. The whole point was, do you enjoy it? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's a hard line because sometimes you need the, the, the whole idea of sacrifice mm-hmm. is that you're sacrificing or you're giving up something now, in this case, joy, for something that will come to you later. For an example, it would be finances, and then what you do with that finance is, you know, invest that into a company or, or something. You're going to use that into your your training, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever you choose to invest that time in is, it has to be worth the sacrifice in order to do that. So the pros have to weigh out the cons, uh, outweigh, outweigh the cons. And, uh, yeah, but in terms of burnout, I think a lot of people hear you need to take a break. You know, we've even got taking a break podcast is literally loaded up on your computer, right? Yeah, there. We're listening to it as we were setting up. Yeah. This. As we were yeah. setting up before we were listening to taking a break podcast, <laughs> who we've had on this podcast, yeah, by the yeah. way. And, um, yeah. So one of the things that I like to do is a few things that you need to consider when you're taking that break is sleep. Mm. Pretty much all of our, uh, our, our healing process from our mind and our body takes place during our sleep. Yeah. And so the way you sleep and the quality of your sleep is just absolutely massive. Do you find that you sleep like a baby or do you are you a restless <gasps> no, tosser and turner? I'm usually okay, but I my my pattern has some, sometimes shifts around. Um it's 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 getting okay now, but sometimes if I'm going to bed like past midnight, that's mm. that's when that's when I notice that things get rough. And you can and you can notice when you're in like a bad mood the following day, or if you you're just really feeling off. Mm-hmm. And it all comes back comes back to sleep. I don't. Did we touch on sleep with exercising health? I don't think we did. I don't think so. I don't we should have around to it, but that, that would have been interesting to hear his um, Christmas Maybe two we'll cents on it. Talk about it next time. Though. Yeah, he, he's on. But it's such a big thing, and. I'm really interested in it, in, in like uh, not just like getting, you know, the right amount of hours of sleep, but the quality of sleep seems to be a big thing. That's what I hear from the experts. It's yes. all about the quality of sleep. So I am really trying to implement stuff now, like, um, you know, not you're looking at screens like mm. an hour before bed and like what food are you eating before bed? Um, like I, I, can't, I remember a few nights ago, I like downed like a, bu- I was downing a bunch of like peanut M and M's while I was gaming with some friends, and it was like ten o'clock at night. And just that like sugar, if I, I notice if I eat like a, a decent amount of sugar, like and it's like past ten p.m., it's like I don't, mm. I don't sleep well. Um, so starting to recognize those things, but yeah, man, like a hundred percent when taking a break, it sleep has sleep has lost its priority. In, in, the, in the modern yeah. age, like especially with our grind and hustle culture. And it's like, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know, it's, yeah. it's so wrong. Like it's so important. It's yeah. so important. And I remember in Exercising Health, I think, what was that quote? We get 13 hours. We're sitting down for 13 hours. So for upwards of 13 hours a day. And we're sleeping, sleeping for, eight, for eight. Which leaves for, for about three yeah. hours of movement. Yeah. And those eight, hour, eight hours of sleep are crucial. And you've got to make sure they're high quality. And we're really just not. I don't think we're appreciating And it's that. hard to to think about, well, how do you get high quality sleep? You close your eyes, you go to sleep, yeah. and you wake up. How do you optimize your yeah. sleep? It doesn't make sense. But here's what I think. And just the same as what you said, it's like I'll sleep when I'm dead. And then you hear, well, what's that guy? He um, runs the Family Fortune thing in America, that game show. I forget what his name is. Anyway. Steve Harvey. St- Steve Harvey. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Yeah, he's got a quote and he's like, he's screaming at the camera, people, rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. Yeah. And Elon Musk has said things similar to that as well. But I think that they optimize their time and their rest so well that mm. they can afford to spend all that time grinding. One, because they're doing something they love. Mm. And two, because their quality of sleep is probably at such a high quality. Mm. One of the things that I, or a few of the things that I like to do is, one, you can probably see on my glasses, I don't know if you can see it in the camera right now, but I've got these blue light blockers, which I only just recently got. Yeah. And so our circadian rhythms are pretty much dictated by frequencies of light. And our circadian rhythm is what our bodies use to indicate when it's time for us to sleep. So when it's daytime, because we're non-nocturnal creatures, when it's daytime, we're awake. When it's nighttime, we're asleep. Mm. I mean, that's pretty like kindergarten level, you know, information yep. right here. Of course. But basically, 
what we've done is through modern technology and you touched on this before you know not looking at your screens before bed we've created all this artificial light we've got all these lights Stu- set up around here, here. <laughs> or, or, yeah. um and we're just implementing that so we can extend our days longer and longer and longer mm. and so it gets to 10 11 12 p.m and then you think okay it's time for bed now and then you can't get to sleep because you've just tricked your circadian rhythm into thinking it's daytime and you've got no melatonin that's being produced because melatonin retreats like a crab into its shell at any time that there's blue light being accessed through the pupils. So, and melatonin is the sleep chemical. So if you want to optimize your sleep, you need to optimize your melatonin. Some people take it exogenously some because like some foods contain melatonin. Some you can take it in pill form or anything like that. The, the best way to do it is to increase it naturally. So one, do exactly what you did. At least an hour before bed, reduce your screen time or do... is Where's my phone? It's over there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I've got a, a red light sort of thing. If I click the home screen on my iPhone, sorry, the, the lock screen on my iPhone three times, it turns it red, right? So yeah. it stops emitting blue light. That's one thing that you can do. The other thing is I drink chamomile tea before bed mm. and the blue light blockers as well. They've been helping heaps with um, with yeah. limiting the blue light that you're receiving. Yeah. I drink chamomile tea before bed. Chamomile has been known to do all this. And you, you can take CBD oil, which is, you know, really good for sleep as well, depending on the quality of the CBD and where you're getting it from. So be cautious about that if you're going to experiment with that. You can do all these things. Mm. I could go on for days about, you know, the the different things that you can do to optimize your sleep. But that's first and foremost, the the first thing you should be doing if you're trying to rest. Like they say train hard, you should rest hard as well. Like rest is not just about doing nothing. It's about optimizing the time away from what you're doing. I mean, it's literally half the work, really. It's supporting the work that you do during the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you might be killing it during the day and doing all this work. But if you've got a poor quality of sleep, you know that's going to have repercussions in your in your productivity during the day when you're, in your, during your waking hours, and yeah, going back to what you're saying before about quality of sleep, it's and like you know, like you said before, but like you do, well, you know, I just shut my eyes. It's what it's all about what you do around that. Hey, mm-hmm. it's like what are you doing to around those hours of sleep? Um, that's what's super important. It's diminishing and, returns at some point if you just yeah. don't rest. Mm-hmm. And I know on 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 the iPhones, like you, so you got the red light thing, which which pro- would probably would be like super effective but i know that they they iphone does have that like what do they call it where they, oh, it the goes, night shift yeah yeah night shift where it goes like yellow yeah uh, i think a lot of people use that i don't know how well that works though. well that's good uh, that, I, that's help. what i was using beforehand because it's just easier on the eyes but mm. I, I feel like the red light thing is just the same function but on steroids yeah and yeah, so be a lot more effective because hey? the color red it, it's one obviously doesn't emit blue light and two um red light our eyes are less sensitive to red light so you can have really bright red light and we don't perceive it as bright as it actually is yeah and that might be a bit confusing but yeah so it, try and experiment with using red lights mm. as an alternative to these artificial blue lights at least at night time let's say at 7 p.m just turn on all your red lights or you know you can yeah. have it on all day if you really want to but that's a bit excessive but yeah so that's that's the first thing and what i was saying before with diminishing returns is if you take working out for example you know you're just working out for like eight hours a day you should really if you're going to be doing an extended structured sort of exercise routine where you're doing like big heavy compound lifts like deadlifts or whatever you're doing are you going to be doing that for eight hours a day no you're probably going to be doing that for one hour a day mm. You need that time to rest. You need that time for your muscles to recuperate. So, and your mind is so complex and it needs that time out yeah. as well and it needs oh, that yeah. optimized time out. So sleep, that's one really good thing. What's another um, rest component? Man, uh, well, I think a big – something that I've been thinking about a lot lately is in terms of like dealing with stress, which seems to stress be Stress is big, yeah. And I – I liked what you said before about like, you know, taking a break the right way. You know, how are you taking your breaks? And it's important to be doing the things where you can sort of disconnect. 
you know, whether that's for me, it's like simply like going for a run or just simply taking a walk and just like disconnecting. Um, and I know like I usually have my AirPods in mm-hmm. as J Max says uh, to go AirPod free, which I'm, I'm, I'm interested in trying. Uh, the, I mean, it'd be cool. I take in the nature. I like to go <laughs> AirPod free, yeah. but if you know, you're listening to some bangers and they're like motivating you to go that extra yeah. kilometer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I personally like to go AirPod free because that's mm. just how I do it. But, you know, there's no right or wrong way. Mm. So, yeah, do whatever you want. Mm. Kick yourself into another gear. That's it. So, yeah, an escapism. That, it, that's interesting mm. because escapisms have been sort of hailed or boxed in by people as like either a positive thing or as a negative thing. It's like mm. escapism, you know, you should be enjoying the reality that you're in. And mm. I think if you're optimizing your, I mean, it's just all about optimization, really. You're going to hear that word a lot when we're talking about rest, optimization, because they're almost um, interchangeable terms. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think... Yeah, just optimizing the, the time you, you spend um, sleeping. And what was the one that we just mentioned? Just taking... Just taking... Uh, y- using your breaks your, properly. Yeah, po- so positive that, escapisms. Positive so escapism, So you yeah. can... That's what I'm just like going to say, yeah. yeah. So you can use that time to watch Netflix if you really want to, which is probably not the most positive escapism, but it is an escapism, right? Or you can use that time to, to run or hike or catch up with some friends or do yoga or uh, take your pick. Uh, mm. It doesn't matter. And I, I think it's important to understand, really, really be self-aware, understand yourself and understand what things you do that help you to relax and to take a break and to relieve yourself from that stress maybe it's fixing your and, car maybe you I mean, yeah yeah could be something like that whether it's going for a walk whether it is just watching netflix like for me like i like i can't binge watch tv series mm-hmm. like I, I just can't i don't i don't i don't have netflix um like i'll occasionally watch stuff i'll watch stuff with friends but i just can't so for me i'll, I'll like i go for like a walk or i try to go for a walk or a run every day um and that's sort of like my number one mm-hmm. like stress relief and it's so it's so important to have that. Like while it is important to work and hustle and and get things done and be productive, take take understand when to take a break and take that break effectively. And I think being self aware, knowing yourself, and knowing what's your most effective way of taking a break, is um is critical. I would Super. I would even argue that taking a break is a uh an aspect or, or a component of your hustle. Yeah. It's supporting the hustle. Oh, definitely. As so is sleep. It, it's it's yep. as essential as the hustle. <laughs> it's like you're going to burn out. Mm. You, are you willing to work 100 hours a week with, you know, 40 of those hours just being absolutely horrendously poorly performed mm. or doing, let's say, 60 to 70 hours a week of extremely high-quality Mm. you know performance mm. you know and using the rest of that time to sleep mm. or and rest however you, you want to i i don't know it's it's a hard balance you know you can either do lots of you know shit quality work or you can do short amounts of extremely high quality work maybe if you are that elon musk type yeah or, or that grant cardone or that gary v type then you can do like 100 hours a week of just like insanely high quality work. Mm. And I don't know, that's, you have to figure out what sort of person you are. And, you know, everyone's got their threshold as well. I think that's another important thing to realize that you don't have to compare yourself to these Elon Musk type figures. You've just got to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. If you can look back at yesterday and say, did I achieve at least the same amount as mm. I did yesterday, if not more, in, or in a better way. That's that should be your 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 measure of mm. success, I think. Right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Comparing yourself to who you were yesterday. Mm. Yeah. Is that what do you do? Do you fall into the trap of comparing yourself to other people? Yeah. Well, I've, I've I think I did initially, like especially those first couple of years out of school when I was just like doing my own thing. And I think that's normal, especially for young people, that comparison. I mean, we've touched on it in many episodes. But you, as I mentioned before, the self-awareness thing, that's what I've really leaned into a whole lot more. And now I'm really confident in myself that I'm in a place where I understand, you know, where my limits are 
and you know when i need to take a break and rest and and you know i i don't put that pressure on myself anymore like if i'm if i'm working on like you know like if i'm writing a new song or something or if, like i'm having to churn out a bunch of like uni work and if i'm just really not feeling it like i'll take a break like i i, I do put in the effort and i put in the hours but i won't push myself i won't break myself you know I won't break my back just just to get the work done, you know. I'll I know when to take a break, which which is super important. So yeah, developing that self awareness such a big thing. Mm. So really understanding your limits too. Hey, maybe it's time to change the the terminology because I, I find that it can become too dogmatic after a while to yeah. just say something like Steve Harvey starts preaching rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. It's mm. like okay, maybe. They don't sleep eight hours a day, but they've optimized their their break time yeah. differently. So to change the terminology, I don't know, maybe you can say, well, it's sort of what I was saying before, that rest is a component of your hustle. Mm. So it's, I don't know, f- find a, just a different way to phrase mm. doing something just so you're sleep not... Grind. Sli- <laughs> sleep grind. Sleep <laughs> grind. Yeah. I, one of my, my gym buddies was saying that. <laughs> it was a, it was, that was a poor choice. No, I mean, it makes sense and it's funny. It definitely makes sense. Just But he was basically saying train hard, eat hard, rest hard. Mm. So I think that's I think that's so important. People yeah. just need to, to stop trivializing trivializing um rest mm. it's it's so important yeah. it's just as important as as hustle indeed know? it is and yeah. i think it's time for us to take a break too <laughs> as always in a little sneaky little intermission yeah yeah all right so all we're right. gonna be back with some more young people podcast quality content in just a sec see you later And we're back after our intermission. Uh, how was the intermission, Burz? How did was, you enjoy it? It was good. We just sort of walked around time. the studio. And you went out on the deck and said, you just yeah. have so much potential. Oh, yeah. And then I just brought up the fact that our mugs are positioned weirdly. They are positioned. And then we almost yeah. started recording. We didn't have any of the lights on or the camera or the camera. Recording. And we were just like, yeah, I'm ready. Was, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyway, but we're back. We're yeah. back. Yeah, it's so another episode of the Young People Podcast. Young People Podcast, mm. yeah, and uh, we're in our second half of episode forty. Forty, yeah, man. yeah, no, jeez. Should we do something grand for episode forty, or should we wait till episode 40. fifty? Surely fifty, right? Yeah, because if it was forty, then we'd have to do like every ten episodes or uh, something. Yeah, that's true. We'll do something for episode fifty, and then we'll do something for episode one hundred. Like have every single guest on that we've ever had. Yeah, actually, you know what would be interesting? I, I, the, the thought did cross my mind if we did something like did a like a five-minute piece with each guest, you know, something mm. like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, that would be gnarly. And then like, you know, yeah. Just well, like... Not even that. Just like tag minutes, team. One minute, one minute two minutes. Yeah. Them. Just like just like touch base with them. It's like, oh, what's your name? Bang, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Glide, Next one. Done. Like, yeah, Glide, Rod, Emily Payne, comes in. Done. Zach Hampson, uh, Brandon Duff. Would we just get them to interview them like all each other? We'll just get them as much yeah. as we can to sit around this table. We'll just because this is a pretty big table. Yeah. I don't know if it can fit like thirty people there. <sighs> no, it'd be it'd be tight, that's for sure. But it'd be cool to do a like even on Zoom. Like you see those like giant Zoom chats with like you know hundred people. Mm. Just do that. And just like get it. like all these people in a Zoom. Just be chaos. That would be an amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, hang on, my dog's scratching at the door. Go the dog, yeah. You go can go. monologue, son. Oh, monologue. Well, I was a young man and the weather was stormy. I walked down the street and I saw it. Well, that was quick. Um, anyway, um, I didn't know where that monologue was going. Let's, let's get back to the episode, shall we? Um, so anyway. Yeah, no, before, the, before the break, we were talking about, um, oh, man, taking a break. Getting, getting quality rest mm. and the importance of that in the hustle context of hustle in the hustle world. Yeah, 100%. We basically outlined three massive components of the rest. Uh, the first one was sleep, optimizing your sleep. Uh, if you wanted to know about like optimizing your sleep, I recommend looking at someone like Ben Greenfield. He is like, the. Ch- I go to his page for everything. Exercising Health as well, who we've had on the podcast just before this episode. Check out his page on Instagram and YouTube. 
I'm sure he's got some stuff covered on sleep. If not, it will probably be coming. Um, the second one was positive escapisms. Yep. Mm. So that's for you. It's running. Mm. You know, you love to run. You love to stick in those headphones, crank in another gear and just go. Mm. And that's a good way to just, I just disconnect, f- disconnect, yeah, yeah, yeah. forget about all your responsibilities for a second. And that's done in a positive way as mm. well. It's better than just binging Netflix and, mm. you know, sitting around eating donuts thinking, yep. you know, this is rest. Rest is not doing anything. Yeah. No, hey, you've got to do it in a positive way. Yeah, yeah. What was the third one? Do you remember? I remember. Do you remember? I remember. What it was? It was about your personal threshold. Yes. Yeah, You're not comparing yeah. yourself to other people but mm. comparing yourself to who you were yesterday. So mm. everyone's threshold is different. Maybe... You know, if you are that Elon Musk type, you can crank out 100 hours a week mm. of and just so, like then pure great. hustle. And yeah. if so, then boom, 100%. It's great. Not everyone's Elon Musk. You know, I'm True. not. You're not. I'm not. So, um, yeah, just understand your threshold and be okay with that mm. because we're all different. And maybe you can work on increasing that threshold. You know, there's certain ways that you can do that, mainly through the, the previous two... Uh, components of our rest period so those are the three big things sleep positive escapism and understanding your threshold that's it what about on the other side of the coin you've got rest but you've actually got hustle Mm. the actual hustle yeah optimizing the hustle Mm. hustle over resting can be bad can't it that's good that's where you develop laziness mm, um that's where laziness breeds yeah, and like grows for me what i find is if i take you know if i have two days off in a row like laziness starts to seep in mm-hmm. i don't know it's just it, that's like a key number like two like the two to two yeah i can take one day off if it's like two days off back to back and then i've got to get to back to work the next day it's it's like i lose my rhythm a bit there mm. so it's understanding like you know that Again, that balance, which seems to be the key word that keeps popping up, but that balance between rest and and knowing when to when to work. You know, you can't just be rest. You can't be lazy all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred you percent. Know. Yeah, no, it sounds. I, it's, I, I mean, it sounds simple, but yeah, I hundred percent agree. I mean, you can you can trick yourself. And I was saying this to someone this morning that you know we uh, we as human beings, when we look at the way that we structure our societies. We, we plow through roads and we carve out roads. We plow through bush mm. to carve out all these roads and, and pathways for us to create a literal path of least resistance. Have you ever been on a really in a car on a really shitty road with potholes everywhere and, blah, 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 and you know, you're jumping around in the car and then you've transitioned onto a really smooth, newly laid out, tarred road and it's just like you can't even, you just feel like you're gliding along there. Mm. Have you ever hiked through a bush before there's been a road that's gone through there? Which is one, I mean, I guess you're getting you to your destination quicker on a path out road, but you're also gaining a lot from learning how to jump over those hurdles, right? So yeah. I think as people, we get so good at learning to clear away those hurdles that we forget the benefits of jumping over them. And this is a very literal analogy, mm. but I'm talking about this in sort of a, a metaphorical context right now. So you can, you, you should be learning to optimize how to jump over those hurdles and even putting them in place. Sometimes you've got to jump into the fire because that's where all, all the growth happens, right? Because you have to sort of journey to hell before you can come back and learn how to mm. tackle your hurdles. Yeah, it's what... I, I really like that analogy there before and, and again what you said about the growth thing. When you overcome those if you if you those physical it's it's all about taking the easy road or the hard road. And that, that you're not gonna find that development down that easy road, hey. Mm-hmm. Like that's 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 what you see when you have that sort of I guess entitlement and everything sort of given to you on a plate and it's very straightforward. You do, you're not experiencing that that resistance. Which is crucial for for development. That's sort of what you're getting at with that mm, analogy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and hundred percent. Like you can take the easy road for as long as you'd like, mm. and you think, as I was saying before, you're going to get to your destination quicker on a mm. smooth road. Yeah. But there comes a point where that road's going to stop, and if you haven't got the skills to jump over those barriers, then you're going to pro- probably just turn around, or you're going to stop 
I think that there was an ancient philosopher that basically told uh, um, a proverb or an, an analogy of some sort where he basically, everyone's walking along a path mm. and the further you go along that path, the more pit stops you sort of see and people take rests at these stops mm. and you can either take a rest there or you can keep going you can take another rest, keep going, take another rest, keep going. And eventually, if you just keep going and you grind and you grind and you grind, eventually you're going to find yourself and you're going to look around and there's not going to be anyone in sight. And that can be a really the, the one of the detriments or the lonely aspects of the hustle is that you can find it quite a, a lonely journey. Mm. Mm. But I think, especially with the internet now, we're networking and we're able to find people that are on or as far down the path as we want to go we can find people further down the path than than we are and we can basically create a, a networked community of people who are going along this path with you so i think that's the other thing is journeying one learning how to overcome these hurdles that are going to be on that path not sticking to the path of least resistance but surrounding yourself with people that are necessarily on the same or going in the same direction as yeah. you. I mean, I say I probably say this every single episode, you know, about yeah. about surrounding yourself with the people that you want to emulate or that motivate you. Like people like Zach Hampson, for example. You were saying that before. He's just a, um, you're, you're supplementing motivation with Zach Hampson. Yeah. You want to get motivated, just call after Zach up in the morning. You talk to him. Yeah, just give me a pep know. talk, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to work this morning. I don't feel like it was, just talk to me. It's like, <laughs> yeah. then I want to like, yeah, like kill the day. Yeah. It's like, yeah, 100%. Thanks, dude. Put the phone down. Yeah, Not that I've ever done that. I'm going to Zach. Get ready. I'm going to give you a, like a maybe that an be early a, morning phone call. You could start a business. I was Zach. about to say maybe that could be an, an additional <laughs> service that he provides. Like he's teaching his art classes, and at the same time, he's like a motivation motivational speaker at the same time. Man, like, yeah, <laughs> dude, yeah, hundred percent. But the other point that I was sort of talking about is not just being surrounded with people that are going to um, be hustlers, mm. but being someone who people want to surround themselves with. Yeah. Right? Because, yeah. I mean, you, you could look around and you could say, oh, I'm looking for all these hustlers and, you know, I can't, they're not in my friend group, can't get them. It's like, well, maybe they don't want to surround themselves with you. Are you really someone that you they want to emulate? So I think it's, it's a big give and take here. You have mm. to be on the path to surround yourself with people on the path. Mm. Right? So that's a big, big part of the hustle culture. I heard a quote recently saying um actually it was a while ago that i heard it but if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together hmm. i think that's like huge and so i think if you if you want to be if you want to emulate people you have to be a contender for people that want to emulate you hmm. so i think that's huge Are there, when i talk about people that are on the same path, mm. you know, the five people you spend the most time with, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm. Who are the people that you sort of think of for you personally? The pit, like the like now who I spend the most yeah. time with? I mean, it's... Will it keep you on the path? It'd be a couple of my family members uh, and then probably a couple of like, like you and then a couple other friends as well. So... So nice tight knit circle. It's 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 a it's a it's a tight knit circle, and it's really just made mostly made out of family and friends. And I do find a lot of value in connecting with new people, though. That's what I find for in terms of my productivity and everything. When I'm connecting with new people and looking to to taste new things, yeah, every time I talk, like every time we have like a podcast guest in, they teach me something new. Mm. You know, and expanding that 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 connect expanding those connections and talking to those people is so valuable mm -hmm. that's what i find but what about you what's your what's your sort of five um people i don't know if they have to i mean i think it's probably better if they're in your life yeah so you can you know personally bond with them but as you said like you obviously we do this excuse me we do this podcast together so 
Mm. This is obviously a big avenue for, big for us both yeah. to grow. The podcast on its own is it's going to sound weird for me to say this but the podcast on its own is like its own entity mm. like the fact that i have this is such like a broad avenue uh. and it's just like a networking hub as you were sort of saying it's people who are on that path who are hustling trying to promote themselves trying to be more articulate coming on the podcast chatting with us promoting their stuff we're promoting their stuff as well and promoting it it's just like a big promotion circle jerk and, much, yeah. <laughs> and so I think this podcast is a big entity of, of, of that hub. So definitely, yeah. Anyone that comes on this podcast is someone that I essentially want to surround myself with. Yeah. Um, because we select them pretty carefully, like the people that we want to talk to and we want to have on. Um, yeah. So I think that's, that's big. You, Anyone on this podcast, Zach, um, I've got some guys at the gym that I, um, I really, really grind with. And I guess that's the other thing is you can't become too dogmatic with – you have to have a variety of people Yeah, because not everyone's going to think the same way. And you're going to have disagreements with people. That's just the nature of things. And I think if you're not disagreeing and if there's no clashes in ideology, then you're not thinking. And if you're not thinking, then – what path are you on really you just you're just a sheep at that point you're not carving out your own path for for your life you're just following the the sort of footsteps of other people mm. and you can certainly use people as stepping stones to get not that you have to squash them you can pull them up and they'll pull you up as well but yeah you can use people as um as sort of learning curves and stepping stones to get to where you're going but at the same time, you can't just be following them just needlessly and mindlessly. I mean, that, that's the whole idea of dogma is living with the results of other people's thinking. So you have to be extremely self-aware um, of the path that you're going, which I guess is a, a goal. Mm. You just need to have a goal and you need to have a direction. And you have to use those people to get you there and to challenge you on that because you might be going down a dark place and you don't even know it yet. Mm. So... I think that's that's probably and the best thing. Feeding positive energy into other people's lives is a good way to to promote positive energy in your own life. Mm. That's what I find too. If you've got that sort of that's that's what I find, especially with our podcast guests. If we're having that like that really productive conversation with them, and we're talking about you know their their workflow and their product productivity, all these ideas are flowing, and after like afterwards i mean we say every time like we like continue talking with the guests off it off you yeah. know off air yeah. every time just because that like positive energy is flowing yeah and that's what i find if i'm like talk connecting with a friend or something whenever you feed that positive energy in into them and all that like giving them like po- you know positive affirmation and and supporting them that's supporting you and, it, and it, it, it'll, it'll come back to you in that way as well if you're supporting someone else that's what i find as well mm-hmm yeah. yeah yeah no well i think it's got everything to do with attitude yeah is like i've worked with so many people and i don't think it's a coincidence that the people who bring the most joy mm-hmm. and the most positive attitude to the workplace tend to have the least amount of problems so i've i've worked with that bunch of people and i've worked with a lot of people who are mm-hmm. completely negative and they come they, they complain that they're not getting enough work and then when they are at work, they're complaining about being there and they're complaining about the task they've got to do and this and that and that. I, I think, and this is something, I'm going to say this probably a few times in the coming podcasts because I heard this the other day and it's one one of those quotes that you just... Sticks with you. It just sticks with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's basically a stoicism proverb mm. and it says, I'm going to get it wrong uh, word for word but it's something along the lines of when you experience misfortune don't label it as misfortune but to bear it worthily is good fortune so basically what that saying is the way you interpret trials mm. is as big a part of your success as if you were to to just win anyway right so yeah, yeah to to bear misfortune worthily is good fortune mm. so yeah i, I think I just like just I show that. up yeah. just show up and and mm. and be okay with being okay mm. you don't have to 
complain about everything and you don't have to, like, even when everything is shit, even when everything's gone, you know, horribly wrong. A customer at work said this to me the other day. I was just sort of talking. I was just, um, I don't even know what I was doing. We just sort of started off a conversation and he said, the best way to get rid of a problem is to find a bigger one. And I think that's <laughs> like, especially yeah. when you're in the retail world, you start to realize like how trivial the problems that people are hyping themselves up over are. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the this jacket's the wrong color or this computer's malfunctioning or yeah. this. And, uh, and I remember someone who I used to work with, um, Wade in the bakery, he, um, he said basically the same thing, just in a far less articulate way. He, he basically said, what do you think, like, people in third world countries who are starving every day like are thinking are they thinking oh you know this these jeans don't suit this top and oh my friend group is this no they're just trying to survive yeah and i think you need to put urgency on the goals that you're you're trying to achieve and you should have a just like you should section out your your hierarchies of of priorities here you've got your fundamental things those are the things that you give shits about that you actually can you know Mm. care deeply about and then everything up from there you can just let go it's just Mm. water off a duck's back yep and it's like it's like that old saying you'll find an excuse or you'll find a solution and if a problem comes your way and you start immediately thinking, oh, well, I can't do it because of this reason or that reason or it's not working because I'm that or this or he said that or she did this. Those are all excuses. You're, you're just thinking, well, now misfortune has come my way mm. and here's why all the reasons. And you could go on for days and days and you have every right to because misfortune has come your way and why shouldn't you complain about that? Well, it's not salute. Uh, you it's not um, solving anything. Mm. It's not bringing you any solutions. Mm. So, I don't know. You either you either disregard the problem mm. or you come up with a solution for it. Yeah. So, And I think setting boundaries is a big thing as well. I mean, that sort of plays into the mm. whole aspect of surrounding yourself with those five. And it doesn't have to be five. It can be 10. It can be 15. Yeah. I think the smaller knit circles are better though. But setting boundaries for the mm. people that are bringing shit to your life. So... If that person that you have to spend more time with is you know, being that constant whinging, complaining, mm. sort of just leech on your life, you don't have to engage with those people. You don't mm. have to entertain those criticisms. And yeah. you, you don't necessarily have to pull them out of it either. You just have to keep grinding on. You, you That's the minimalist quote. You can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you can change the people who are in your life yeah. rather than changing the people who are already in your life. You know, turning them into different people. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can how can people sort of? I mean, it's tricky. Sometimes it's sometimes people can't even recognize when they're getting that neck like like that negative person is feeding into their life, and sometimes it takes you know someone else bringing it up or or you know you finally stepping back to see actually that or maybe assessing you know evaluating that relationship with a person and assessing whether they're you know are they having a positive influence on your life are they making you a more productive person and are they supporting your own personal development how can people sort of um uh, be be able how can how can people cut out those those negative people like because it's a tricky thing like it's a matter of evaluating who those negative people and surrounding yourself with the right ones like because it, mm. it, it, it 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 sounds like an easy thing but i think a lot of people are scared to do that scared to cut out that friend that they've had you know for for years or something mm. you know it's a yeah. tricky thing isn't it it is and it's especially hard when you have no choice but to surround yourself with these sorts of yeah. people because sometimes you're in a workplace mm. surrounded by people that are just not on that yeah that same path and i before i understood what stoicism really was I used to, people used to ask me when I was at work, surrounded by all these problems coming up and different difficult personalities, Mm. 
that were compounded by difficult tasks mm. and people used to just say how do you remain just so chill all the time and you know even when everything does go to shit it doesn't seem to phase you and i said well i've just got a, i've just allowed myself to have a certain level of apathy for this place yeah and it sort it, it sort of goes to that saying that uh, that thing that i sort of said before with you find a bigger problem mm. so this isn't my life right now the fact that the the bakery bread rolls aren't out at a certain time or we've run out of the, these cookies or the flavors of this or the the freezer walls collapsed because we've over ordered our stock and you know it's, it's like at the end of the day i'm going to go home and i'm going to realize that that is the bakery is still going to be there tomorrow not that i'm in the bakery anymore but yeah, the bakery yeah. or your job yeah. or your your these menial tasks are still going to be there for you tomorrow, and you can find solutions for them, or you can let them burn you out. But if you're using you know all all your rest periods and all your hustle sort of techniques to structure out the most positive days and weeks and months and years for yourself for your life, why would you let these things bother you? Mm. Because that was another quote that I heard. I'm going to butcher this again, but it was basically something along the lines of uh, you can worry about what you can change or you can worry about what you can't change mm. or you can do both. It's like, I don't know. If you, if you can change it, then don't worry about it. If you can't change it, then don't worry about it. Mm. So that's how I've always sort yeah. of seen it. Yeah. So it's just just remaining positive. But your, your question was how do you – sort of cut out those people if you yeah. need to. So one of the things I've been doing is sort of – it depends because you don't want to burn your bridges. You mm. can – someone can come up and, you know, start complaining and you can go, hey, man, just shut up, you know, I've had enough. I'm just sitting boundaries right here. But then you've got to work with that person for, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what so, I mean, yeah. so what you can do, which is what I've been doing a bit, is you say to that person, you sort of match their, you know, Oh, the the delivery came in late. It came in late. Oh, that's completely unacceptable. That's you know. And then you sort of change the level a little bit, and you just go. But you know, at least that'll give us more time to focus on. Yeah. You know these other tasks that mm. we we're a bit behind on. It's yeah. like you sort of just give it. You Turn you it. solve it yeah. for them. Mm. So I think that's something. If you have to be around those people, mm. otherwise, just cut them out of your life. Mm. They're not bringing you anything. Mm. So, yeah, I think – and recognizing when you start making excuses. Mm. And that's really easy to do when you've surrounded yourself with people yeah. like yourself mm. or like Zach or like any of the hustlers that we've had on here. Mm. The, the moment you start complaining and saying, my life's hard, pity me, they just say, cut that shit out. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not letting you. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's – those are the most important things. Yeah, especially if you're like working towards something, you know, mm. and – you really need to be focusing and surrounding yourself with the right people and thinking about your own personal development. You really got to sort of assess mm. what are those people, mm. you know. Maybe just in every situation lifestyle. you just got to ask yourself, am I being a bitch? Mm. Am I handling this <laughs> like, like the yeah. way like someone who is trying to find a solution would, yeah. would handle this thing? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's okay. how I do it. How, about, how do you do it? How do you cut these people, these negative people out of your life? I've, I've actually, I liked what you mentioned before about giving a situation. I think I can't remember what you said exactly, but it's something about giving um, a, a certain amount of apathy to, to mm. a situation. That's what I've, that's what I've learned. I, th I think in the past I got like really caught up, like you know, if something you know negative, if I had a negative interaction at work or something, like it re I'd really, it, it would, I'd, it, it would, I would let it eat me up mm. inside, you know, and like those things stick with me for a little while. I've learned not to. Not to like, I wouldn't say like, just not care. Like, it's not that I just like sort of ignore it completely. I look at it, I understand it and I assess it. I evaluate the situation and I'm like, you know, how much, how much uh, care am I going to give this? Mm -hmm. Like with, uh, something that Matt Diavella um, said, which I might've mentioned on the podcast in a previous episode, but Matt Diavella brought up a point, which are one of my favorite points that I've ever heard him bring up um, about, is this situation, if a bad situation happens, is this situation going to be affecting me in 12 months' time? Mm. It's really important to put that stuff in, into perspective. And it's like, is it really worth getting anxious about and worrying about and, you know, putting putting that attention towards? And 
you know, most of the time it's not. Mm. You know, people get caught up about this stuff and these negative situations that are that are occurring in life and it's like uh, you know it's mm. not my priority so i've for me like i've i've really developed a, i think a good sense now I and mean, i'm still developing it of, of like understanding where my priorities are and like what actually matters to me yeah i yeah. think that's awesome well, i've got a similar sort of rule like with the news i always becoming you know, you want to be informed on mm. what's going on in the world. Obviously, that's an extremely crucial part of living in a modern society. But I think the the news industry is exactly that. It's an industry. And so they're trying to constantly create drama, or not create, but in, inform on, on drama that might be trivial. Mm. And so I've distanced myself from like news outlets and things like that. And the way I see it is if it's important, I'm going to find out about it. I'm going to hear about it. You know, it's going to come my way. Um, like you, if you could not watch the news at all ever, you could never look at a news article or anything like that. And you would know that there's a global pandemic right now mm. because everyone's talking about it. And if, in my opinion, if it's not, uh, if it's not relevant in a month from now, mm. it's not news that's just the way I think about it. And that's the same thing with what you were doing. If this problem isn't going to affect you 12 months from now, you can probably deal with it. Mm. If it's not going to affect you six months from now, if it's not going to affect you a month from now, you know, choose your time frame. Mm. That's up to you. But yeah, just, just think about the fact that your attitude is your biggest superpower. I think whenever you're approaching anything, it can be, it can be a little task. It can, it can be getting some, just, you know, posting a, a, an Instagram post for your company, for example. That's a little thing. But it's your attitude towards that. Or it can be achieving a massive goal or starting that, that company in the first place, you know. That, you know, it's your attitude towards that that yeah, counts. It's huge. And it's your attitude yeah. towards loss as well because oh, yeah. it's not just gain, 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 you know, just win, I'm just going to jump over every single hurdle. And then when the real challenges come, I'm just going to be ready. You know, sometimes when the real challenges come, even before the real challenges come, you get knocked down. Hmm. And as the old, I think, is it, what's the, is it Smash Mouth? You know, you get knocked yeah. down. You oh. get up again. No. It's, it's not Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth, it's... um. One of those Can't 90s remember, bands. But one of those 90s bands. Yeah. But yeah, you get back up again. Yeah. And so it's the way you handle loss, I think. Mm. You know, have you, have you ever seen someone? I, I'm a big MMA fan. So you see people losing all the time. In any fight, there's going to be at least one loser. Of course. <laughs> and, and the way people hold themselves and handle themselves when they lose can make or break their reputation. Mm. When, if someone loses and they start saying, you know, it was the ref's fault or it was his fault or, you know, I had a, a you know, a limited fight camp or I did this, 100,000 excuses, mm. right? What if they won under all those excuses? Mm. You know, then they're the greatest fighter of all time, you know. Da, da, da. Uh, no, I, I think if you lose, you lose and you come back stronger and you just own that and you mm. go, no. I mean, Dominic Cruz is probably the best sort of person in MMA that I've seen at handling loss. You know, he just says, no, I showed up. I was there. I, I did everything I could mm. and I didn't succeed tonight. It's that attitude. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's that attitude. If you can't handle loss, you don't deserve a win. Mm. I think that's... I think that's boom, boom. boom. It's a mic drop. So good. Yeah. Well, hopefully this podcast has given you some positive affirmation and... um just the importance of being self-aware, understanding when to take a break mm. and also just your attitude in general, hey. So let's reiterate. So the first half of this uh, podcast here before the intermission, mm. we talked about rest and we talked about the three components. We talked about sleep, optimizing sleep. We talked about... The positive... Um, po uh, positive escapism. escapism, yep. And we talked about your personal threshold, mm. right? And then... For the hustle, flipping the coin on flipping the, the coin the, on the other side, the, the actual it. hustle side of things, we talked about your attitude, mm. which we just covered. The negative, well, negative and positive influences. Negative and positive mm. influences. People. Yeah, and uh, I think 
do, what, did I, what else did we cover? And yeah, basically, basically just those two. We just expanded mm. on those two quite a lot. Mm. So yeah. Um, I think overall, just like understanding the balance between the two, like I guess in general, we've sort of talked about the hustle versus the rest. But and they're all one thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all inter- interconnected. That's it. They all, they, it all feeds into each other. Um, so hopefully this has provoked some like interesting thought for you guys in terms of how you sort of assess your life and, and your attitudes and the people you surround yourself with. And if you've got any extra thoughts or maybe some comments on some of the stuff that we've, that we've talked about today, feel free to, uh, to drop it in our social medias, the Young People Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and YouTube. Yeah. Everywhere. 100%. That's it. All right. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us for this week's podcast episode with the Young People Podcast. You can find us on, I mean, I'm just going to reiterate what you just said. You can find us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're going to be posting clips and quotes and all sorts of fun things. So stay on that. Share it around. Yeah. And you can listen to it. You can listen and watch. You can watch the podcast on YouTube. On Spotify. Listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all the other ones. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Every second Wednesday, brand new episodes. All right. Very fun stuff. Cool. We're going to head off. See See you guys.